Hello all, welcome back. Now we'll be discussing about the hypothesis testing in detail. We make decision about population or population parameters based on sample statistic or samples. Whenever we make decision about the population or population parameter, we make an assumption about the population parameter and this assumption is known as the statistical hypothesis. In other words, we can say, like we make a claim about the population parameters and more precisely, we define hypothesis as a quantitative statement about the population. Suppose we make a statement that the average weight of the student in Chosun University is 65 and here is the uh, claim or assumption and once we make claim or statement then we have to check the validity and in order to check the validity we will go through the hypothesis test and uh, there are basically uh, four steps for the hypothesis testing and uh, first we have to state the hypothesis then we set the criteria for the decision and uh, in the third step we compute the test statistic and finally we make a decision and to begin we identify the hypothesis or claim that we feel it should be tested and basically there are two mutually exclusive hypotheses uh, one is the null hypothesis and another one is the alternative uh, the null hypothesis is stated as null is a statement about the parameter such as the population mean uh, that is assumed to be true or it's a claim or a statement about the population parameter uh, that is assumed to be true until it's declared to be false and we test uh, null hypothesis for the possible rejection under the assumption that is initially true and another uh, hypothesis is an alternative hypothesis and it is written as h uh, subscript 1 and in it can be also written as h subscript a and it is an a hypothesis which is complementary to the uh, null hypothesis or it is a statement that directly contradicts uh, null hypothesis by stating that the actual actual value of population parameter is uh, less than, greater than or not equal to the value that is stated in the null hypothesis. Okay, let's see an example. Suppose a manufacturer of cold drinks that claims that on average 500 milliliter of beverage is filled in each bottle and here the manufacturer claims that uh, the bottle is filled with 500 ml of beverage and uh, it is the claim about the parameter and here parameter is the average uh, uh, average beverage that is filled in the bottle and here our null hypothesis is uh, an average in an average the each bottle contains 500 ml of the cold drinks that is as not is equal to here mean uh, is equal to 500 ml and uh, we have made an assumption about the population parameter and we move on assuming it's true and next is we make an alternative hypothesis which is h1 here and h1 is that mu is not equal to 500 ml that is the bottle doesn't contain 500 ml of uh, beverage or cold drink and we call this two-tailed test uh, when the alternative hypothesis consists of not equal to symbol here when it consists of not equal to symbol then it will be two-tailed test uh, and or there may be another scenario where where the bottle contains uh, in average less than 500 milliliter 
of the beverage and it is one tail test. Similarly, the bottle contains another hypothesis where the bottle contains more than 500 ml of the beverage and here we can see when this alternative hypothesis uh, has a not equal to sign then it is two tail test and when it has less than or greater than sign then it will be the one tail test and for this two tail uh, for this alternative hypothesis uh, we call one tail test uh, and the hypothesis test with the average or less than uh, 500 ml is the left sided tail uh, left tail test and hypothesis with the greater than symbol will be the right tail test once we set the hypothesis we state the level of significance for a test well while we take the decision the possible outcome can be we may reject the null hypothesis or we retain the uh, null hypothesis the success of test is determined by the rejection of the null hypothesis that means our attempt is to reject the null hypothesis so if we reject the null hypothesis we will accept the alternative hypothesis and if we accept the null uh, hypothesis then we will be rejecting the alternative hypothesis now question arises when should we reject or accept the null hypothesis or how to set the criteria for the uh, rejection or acceptance of the null hypothesis and uh, let us see a simple example of non-statistic non example like for students who uh, attempts an exam the full marks is set to 100 uh, and 40 as a pass mark and uh, here we can say that 40 is the level if he scores greater than or equal to 40 then uh, he passes uh, otherwise he will fail so we can say that 40 as the uh, level and analogous to uh, exam score we can apply like we can s uh, that uh, we can set the level of for the rejection or acceptance for the null hypothesis and it is known as a, a significance level or alpha level it is generated by alpha in hypothesis testing this uh, uh, level of significance gives us the probability of error in rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis and it's denoted by alpha as we can say that uh, it is the level of uh, we can also say it as the level of rejecting the true null hypothesis uh, and uh, in general it is uh, uh, set as a 5%, 1% or 0.1% uh, 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 of level of significance and this means that this 5% 5% uh, 5 of level of significance means that there is the 5% probability or chance of making the wrong decision that means uh, out of 100 decision we have chance of making 5% wrong decisions or we like while we uh, accepting the null hypothesis we have five percent chance of uh, uh, accepting the wrong hypothesis or while we uh, reject the null hypothesis then there is a five percent chance of rejecting the uh, five percent chance of rejecting the true null hypothesis uh, this that means like out of 100 decisions suppose if we are making 100 decisions we may have chance of making five wrong decision once we set the level of significance then we have to decide which type of test uh, will be applied and uh, you can apply two tail test or one tail test as described before when alternative hypothesis consists uh, uh, consists of not equal to sign then we apply two tail test and when alternative uh, hypothesis consists less than or greater than sign we will apply the one tail test 
uh, and here we apply two tilt or one tilt test on the basis of uh, uh, on the standard normal distribution curve and we apply one or two tilt test and uh, let us see for the uh, two tail test here we set the alpha level is equal to 0 0.005 like this is our standard normal curve we take the decision on the basis of this curve and here is the uh, standard normal curve and the uh, area under curve is 1 and uh, it is symmetric about the mean and uh, like uh, uh, we can say this means uh, 0 0.5 on the left side and 0 0.5 on the right side and we can see both uh, we can see both tail on the left side and the right side and as we have two tail test we divide this alpha in half so that an equal proportion of area is placed under the un uh, 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 placed in the upper and the lower tail that is the alpha value will be divided by 2 on the left tail and alpha uh, divided by 2 on the right tail so the alpha level will be 0 0.05 here and it's 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0.025 on the left side and 0 0.025 on the uh, right and remaining 0.475 on the left and 0.475 percent area on the right will remain around the mean like uh, around this mean this is the 0.475 area on the left and 0.475 area on the right of the mean and in aggregated like in total it will be 0.95 area it will remain around the mean so the area covered by alpha by 2 on both sides is called the rejection region uh, while performing the test if the value of test statistic fall within the region like this region of rejection then we will reject the null hypothesis and when the result of the test statistics fall within the region of acceptance like within this region around me mean and we will accept the null hypothesis and a critical value is the cutoff value that defines the boundaries beyond which less than 5% of sample means can be obtained if the null hypothesis is true and here the sample means obtained beyond the critical value will be a result in the decision to reject the null hypothesis we can estimate the value of this area from the standard normal table from mu to critical value uh, and uh, here we can see the point is mu plus 1.96 uh, sigma it is like from mean plus 1.96 standard deviation to mean minus 1.96 standard deviation uh, it is for two tilt and uh, we have taken the alpha by uh, alpha divided by two because both sides will contain the rejection reason and the in acceptance reason we will accept the null hypothesis and in rejection reason we will reject the null hypothesis and it's for five percent uh, level of uh, significance we can make it uh, we can make it for one percent as well as uh, other we can see like this table here gives the critical values for the one and two tail test at uh, uh, 0 0.05 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 level of significance this is the table we can see and on the basis of this uh, we can we will take the decision And for, let's see for one tail test, uh, one for left tilt and next for the right tilt, both are symmetric about the mean. And when alternative hypothesis contains uh, greater than sign, then we will apply the right uh, tail test and the rejection reason will lie 
on the right side and if we set alpha equal to 0 0.05 then the recession region will be will have the 0 0.05 area and the remaining area or the remaining region will have 0 0.095 and the critical point here is 1.645 of sigma it is plus one point uh, we can see here like this is the 1.645 of the sigma and for left tilt the alpha will be like when the alpha is 0 0.05 and the recession region will lie on the left side and if we set alpha is equal to 0 0.05 then the recession region will have 0 0.05 area and the remaining region will have the 0 0.95 which is uh, the acceptance region and the critical point will be here minus 1.645 of sigma at this point now the next step is to calculate the test statistics where we can take various uh, tests like uh, z test to t test or chi square test and uh, z test is applied when the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and the standard deviation population is none and it follows the standard normal distribution and we estimate the z value using uh, this formula like this z score is given by this x bar this is the sample mean minus population mean divided by the standard deviation of the sample and this standard deviation of sample is estimated um, on the basis of uh, population um, standard deviation and it is uh, estimated as population standard deviation divided by the root n this n is sample size and when the sample size is less than 30 and the standard deviation of population is not known we in this case we use t-test here the t-score is obtained as uh, this x bar minus mu x bar is nothing but the sample mean minus population mean divided by the standard deviation of sample and now in step 4 we will take the decision uh, here the decision will be we will either retain or reject the null hypothesis and we make the decision on the basis of calculated test statistic value and the level of significance we set like we have the z value as a test score and we have a tabulated value of z as the uh, alpha level of significance and if the calculated z or the obtained z is greater than the tabulated z then we reject the uh, null hypothesis which means there is a significant difference between the sample statistics and the parameter here while uh, while uh, taking the decision we have taken the modulus and it is taken because this z is symmetric about the mean and it may have positive as well as the negative value so if we calculate less than the tabulated um, z we will accept the null hypothesis which means there is no significant difference between the sample statistic and the population parameter and if the calculated z is greater than the tabulated z then we will reject the hypothesis which means there is a significant difference between the sample statistic and the population parameter we can also take the decision on the basis of p-value this p-value is nothing but the probability of obtaining a sample statistic as different or more different from the parameter specified in the null hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is true and when the p-value is small or close to zero then there is a little evidence that data come from the distribution given in the null hypothesis and when the p-value is uh, not small then there is the evidence that the data do come from distribution given by the 
as not are the null hypothesis. In other words, a larger P indicates that a little or no evidence against the as not or null hypothesis. And in step 2, we stated the criterion or the probability of obtaining a sample mean at which point we will decide to reject the value stated in the null hypothesis and it is typically set as the 5% or 1% in the behavioral research and to make the decision we compare p-value to the criterion set in the step 2 basically we get this p-value from the standard table like from z-value we can get the uh, corresponding p-value of the z-value so once we uh, estimate the z-score then we can get this p-value or the probability value and uh, when p-value is less than 5% that is p less than 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis and we refer to p less than 0 0.05 as a criterion for deciding or to uh, for deciding to reject the Null hypothesis also uh, note uh, that when p is equal to 0 0.05 the decision is also to reject the null hypothesis and when p value is greater than 5 percent then we will retain the null hypothesis the decision to reject or retain the null hypothesis is called the significance as uh, and when p value is less than 0 0.05 we reach the significance the decision is to reject the null hypothesis and when the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 we fail to reach the significance and the decision is to retain the null hypothesis in step 4 we decide whether to retain or reject the null hypothesis as we are observing the sample not an entire population uh, it is possible that conclusion may be wrong or we may uh, have some error in the decision there are four decision alternatives the decision is to retain the null hypothesis could be correct or the decision to retain the null hypothesis could be incorrect and while we reject the null hypothesis the decision to reject the null hypothesis could be correct or the decision to reject the null hypothesis could be incorrect as mentioned before when we decide to reject the null hypothesis we can be correct or incorrect and the incorrect decision is to reject the true null hypothesis and we call this decision as an example of the type 1 error and with each test we make there is always some probability that our decision is of the type 1 error as we have mentioned before that's why we set the level of significance and it is defined by alpha like when we set alpha is equal to of uh, 5 percent and there is always chance that uh, we are going to take the there in our decision there is 5 percent chance of the type 1 error and uh, uh, here a researcher who makes this error decides to reject the previous uh, notion of the truth that are in fact true like the it is defined suppose if the uh, claim of the hypothesis null hypothesis is true but the researcher is uh, uh, rejecting that truth and uh, another one is the type 2 like here when we decide to retain the null hypothesis we can be correct or incorrect the correct decision is to retain the true null hypothesis the decision and the decision is called the null result or null finding and the incorrect decision is to retain the false null hypothesis and this decision is an example of the type 2 error or we call this as the beta error and with this test we make that there is always some probability that the decision could be type 2 error and it is defined by this beta Now let's go for an example that the Templar and Tempio in 2002 reported that the population mean score on the quantitative portion of the GRE, the graduate record examination, general test for the students taking the exam between 1994 and 1997 was 
558 plus minus 139 means the average score was 558 with the uh, standard deviation of 139 and suppose we select uh, a sample of 100 participants that is n is equal to 100 and we record the sample mean to be 585 then uh, compute one independent sample z test for whether or not we will retain the null hypothesis that is um, population mean is equal to 558 at the 0.05 level of significance that is alpha is equal to uh, 0.05 here what we have uh, what we are given is like we have got the population mean and its standard deviation that is uh, 558 and 139 and the number of participants the number of samples of uh, sample is uh, 100 and the sample mean is 585 m is equal to 585 now we have to test whether the null hypothesis is correct or not like first what we have to do is we will state the hypothesis and here the population mean is 558 and we are testing whether the null hypothesis is equal to or not equal to uh, correct so uh, here the null hypothesis s not is, is m is equal to 558 that is mean test score are equal to uh, 558 in the population and our alternative hypothesis is this is not correct or m is not equal to the mean is not equal to 558 that means the mean test score are not equal to 558 in the population and then next we set the criteria and here we set the level of significance to uh, 0.05 which means uh, there the alpha level is equal to 0.05 and now we will locate the z scores in the standard uh, distribution uh, in the standard normal distribution that are cutoffs or critical values and for sample mean values uh, is uh, less than 5% probability of occurrence if the value stated in the null hypothesis 500, uh, 558 is equal to true and uh, in non-directional two-tailed test uh, we divide the alpha value uh, in half so that the equal proportion of area is placed on the upper and lower tail that we had already discussed like we split the alpha in uh, half then the alpha value will be 0 .0, 0 0.025 in the left tail and the 0 0.025 in the right tail and this is the uh, alpha uh, level of significance and its z corresponding critical values and we can see the rejection region and uh, the acceptance region and its critical values for the non-directional uh, two-tailed test when we said the alpha is equal to 0 0.05 as we discussed in our previous slides and step 3 is to compute the test statistic in this step we will compute the test stati statistic to determine whether the sample mean we selected is beyond or within the critical values we uh, stated in the step 2 and that the test statistic for one independent uh, sample z statistic is called the z statistic as we have discussed before there are various types of uh, test statistic uh, that we can use basically on the basis of the number of samples and the standard deviation of the population is given or not and the z statistics is in uh, inferential statistic uh, it is used to determine the number of standard deviation in standard normal distribution that a sample mean deviates from the population mean uh, stated in the null hypothesis here for z statistic we have got the z obtained is uh, uh, estimated using the difference between the sample mean and the uh, population mean divided by the standard deviation of the population and we estimate the standard deviation of population by dividing the 
population mean by root of n here n is the sample size and in our case our um, first we estimate this uh, uh, standard deviation of the sample and uh, here we have got the standard deviation of uh, uh, population to be 139 and we have the sample size of 100 and we get the standard deviation of this uh, some sample to be 13.9 and then we obtain the z value which is uh, just once we plot these values like uh, here the population mean is 585 and the sample mean is 558 and we plug these values here and we get the z obtained to be 1.94 and the obtained value is the value of test statistic and this value is compared to the critical values of the hypothesis test to make a decision and when the obtained value exceeds the critical value we decide to reject the null hypothesis otherwise we will retain the null hypothesis and here is we make a decision and uh, we compare the obtained value to the critical values and we reject if the null hypothesis uh, sorry we reject the null hypothesis if the obtained value exceeds the critical value and uh, here uh, like if we compare this with the figure then the z obtained is 1.94 which is less than the critical value and uh, that's why it does not fall in the rejection region so we will retain the null hypothesis as we can see the critical value for two-tailed non-directional test is 1.96 and our obtained uh, z value or z score is 1.94 which is less than the critical value so we retain the null hypothesis now we can make the decision on the basis of value as well so the probability of obtaining uh, that z obtained is stated by the p value and we can uh, look at uh, the p value or the probability of obtaining z statistics using a, a unit normal table here this is the unit normal table and here is the z stat z value and this is the corresponding p value and we can see here uh, that uh, here in our case that um, when we refer to this table we get the value to be 0 0.0262 and uh, as we are using the two-tail test here what we have to do is we multiply the value uh, in the given column times number of tails in the alpha and we have got two tail test and we multiply this 0 0.0262 by 2 that is we get 0 0.0524 and uh, here is our table and here what we found is that if the null hypothesis were true the p would be 0 0.054 uh, that we could have selected the sample mean from the this population and this criteria we set in the step two was probability that must be less than that we obtain uh, less than um, five percent that we obtain a sample mean if the null have this were true and we see here p is greater than five percent or 0 0.05 we decide to retain the null hypothesis and that's why we conclude that the mean score of the gre test in this population is 558, uh, 558 which is the value stated in the null hypothesis and well it's all about the z test and we can uh, test the hypothesis using t test as well but it will be on like the decision will be taken on the basis of the number of samples uh, and the uh, standard deviation of population is known or not and we can also uh, use the chi-square test for the um, testing of the hypothesis and it's all about the hypothesis test and in our 
next class we'll be discussing about more techniques in the inferential statistics for our diagnostic and predictive analytics and it's all for now